Thank you very much, and I thank Ranking Member Huffman as well. Um, I'm grateful that we've got this little dialogue here. Quite coincidentally, uh, today at lunch, I was with an old friend of mine, David Marinoff. He was telling me about his wife, June, and him uh, on Galapagos Island. And uh, there on the beach, washing up, are these dead sharks who have been finned and therefore died. And you'd, you'd ask yourself, well, well, there's certain irony here. Galapagos Island is sort of a case study of ecological balance. And here you've got the beach, the beach filled with these dead uh, sharks. How, how common can that be? Well, the facts are that 73 million sharks are finned that we know of every year. And they end up in the global shark fin trade. And this is putting multiple species of sharks at risk, at risk for extinction. Shark fins are considered a delicacy in parts of the world. They're sold for high prices, the same way that ivory, you know, a few years ago was sold for high prices. They drive a trade that is not only inhumane due to the practice of shark finning, but increasingly detrimental to the oceans due to the size of this trade. Sharks play an integral role in the ecosystem, ecosystem of the planet, and if populations continue to decline at the current rate, because they're being killed faster than they can reproduce, our oceans, as we know them, are going to be adversely affected. This bill, which has over 230 bipartisan co-sponsors, including a majority of this committee and subcommittee's members, would make it illegal to buy or sell or possess shark fins in the United States. And to be very clear, the bill does not prohibit shark fishing. The proposal builds on previous congressional action targeting the shark fin trade, and it mirrors similar state-level bans, uh, such as the one that our ranking member uh, authored in, uh, when he was in uh, California legislature. Additionally, I've, con I've conferred on this with the Congressional Budget Office. They've told me that the bill does not cost the government. And while protecting wildlife from extinction is, from my perspective, the right thing to do, it makes an awful lot of sense economically. As apex predators, sharks ensure balance below them in the food chain. Their preying, or lack thereof, on species, species directly below them in the food chain has a compounding effect on the availability of fish that many people rely on as a food source and that the fishing industry depends on for income. For example, a decrease in the population of tiger sharks can lead to an increase in prey species, such as monk seals, reef sharks, turtles, and so forth, which in turn can cause a decline in tuna populations. Shark survival also contributes to an ever-growing shark ecotourism trade, as I think many of you know. In my state of California, it's home, we've got 134 dive shops now that focus on shark dives. In Florida, it's home to 185. That's the most in the nation. Direct expenditures for shark encounters brought in $221 million and fueled 3,700 jobs in 2016. That market dwarfs that of the domestic shark fin market, which in 2016 was worth $850,000 in exports. That is a difference of 250 to 1 in terms of the bottom line of what it generates. I am a firm believer in the principle that when the United States leads, other countries follow. I'm going to give you a quick example. The ivory trade, we, we knocked out the ability to take down elephants for their tusks. The consequence is when we put that bill into law, which would also put pressure internationally, the Chinese moved, just as the Europeans, the Chinese moved to shut down their uh, ivory trade market. They acquiesced to the pressure and they shut that down in the end of 2017. When we lead, other countries do follow. And I'm pleased to say that we're starting to see this now with the shark fin trade. Last year, in response to the pressure associated with this bill, Air China and China Southern Air announced they'd no longer allow shark fin cargo. With the strong support for this bill and today's hearing, we've laid the foundation to move the bill. I can only imagine what impact signing this bill into law would have 
not just here in the United States, but importantly, around the world, and to the health of our oceans. Thank you for your consideration, Mr. Chairman.